actually just before those multiplication problems, I'm just going to kind of edit myself in here and talk about this uh, slightly tricky area problem. And uh, it's important to, to note that, you know, whenever we do area from now on, we're not always going to think about, okay, it's the squares, and I have to draw it, and draw the squares in there. You know, we, we get to where we use this stuff faster, but the, the plan is that we're not going to forget the underlying meaning. When we think, well, you know, maybe in the future we'll think, oh, is area base times height, or... It's area like I add up all the sides. And you kind of forget those things sometimes because you don't use them for a while. I do it uh, with, with certain things in math. And uh, at that moment, you just remember, OK, wait. Perimeter's around the, the outside because I walk the perimeter, secure the perimeter. That's the outside. The area is inside. The area is counting up the number of squares. How would I count up the number of squares? Well, if I know that this, say, is, is 4 by 3, well, 4 squares get this way, 3 could, four, OK, 4 times 3, yeah, that's the area, right? That, that kind of reminder is fantastic because it just it goes back to what does it all mean. But if you just memorize at some point area is base times height, and you don't know why, and you don't know that it's carrying out the number of squares, you have no way to, on your own, remind yourself uh, of the fact that you're right. So anyway, we're going to just know now that uh, we're right, that area is base times height. Uh, we're sure we're not getting confused. We know that that's what we need to do. Area is base times height. Uh, we're going to find the area of this gray region here. Um, okay, so the area of the gray region, it is almost a rectangle. It's just missing a bit here at the corner and just a chunk in the middle. So, you know, there's lots of different ways to, to figure out what the area of this thing is. Um, I could break this, uh, this red or the, sorry, this gray area up into uh, rectangles like this, and I can find the area of these three rectangles. Um, and, you know, this one would be eight by well, this is uh, well, this is fourteen. This is nine. So this much right here must be five. So this is eight by five. Um, we can get forty. Um, you, you can do all that, and and if you choose to do it that way, great. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, just do it the way that my brain naturally wants to do it. So you can kind of see how I think. I think this rectangle, you know, it's it's almost, well, this gray area is almost a rectangle. Um, and this big rectangle, if it were complete, would be 10 by 14, right? So I can find the area of that, that big space. I'll just color code this with blue. Uh, but 10 by 14, that's 140. Right? Uh, well, you should probably say this is like uh, inches, inches. Oh, this is all inches. So this is square inches, let's say. It's a bunch of squares. The squares are inch on either side, so they're not square inches. Well, that would be if this was complete. It's not. It's missing this chunk out of the, the corner and this out of the middle. So let's try and figure out um, how big this rectangle is. This rectangle right here, that's easy. Uh, we'll just go ahead and call this one green. This is a 3 by 4 rectangle, so this is 12 inches squared. So uh, we know to take that bit out of this total 140. Uh, this inside here, let's just do that in black. Well, how big is this? So this is, uh, we said this earlier, this is 14. This bit from here to here is 19. This total thing is 14, so this must be 5. Uh, from here to here is 10. From here to here is 8, so the leftover must be 2. So this is 10 inches squared, inch squares, square inches, right? You start to see why we say those words, square inches, inches squared, all that kind of stuff. Um, you can call them inch squares, uh, whatever you want, because we're talking about a square that is an inch on either side. Anyway, uh, so now we have the area of the big, re big rectangle, if it were complete, which it isn't. We're going to subtract 12 of those. OK, so let's go ahead and get after that. Uh, we should probably go over this subtraction algorithm. Why am I crossing out this 0? Uh, and um, oh, you know what? I'm, I'm doing the algorithm incorrectly. I'm supposed to cross out this 4 uh, and make it a 3. Then this becomes a 1, 0, a 10. Um, we're going we're gonna to have to 
unfortunately gloss over that for a second. Um, two minus one is two, or three minus one is two, and there's still one. Now we're going to subtract the ten, and I'm not, I can't write over my uh, picture here, so we'll just bring it up here. And it's not hard to see that one twenty-eight minus ten is one eighteen. There we go. There's the 118 inches squared. That's the area of the gray region. We just found the area of the big rectangle and the areas of the smaller rectangles. Took those away from the larger rectangle, and there we have the total. Okay. Um, this actually would come up quite a bit in my previous job in in uh, uh, polishing concrete. You know, this this may be a, a, a big rectangular room, but this is a uh, you know, a, a utility room that, that they don't need us to do anything to. This may be, um, you know, like a, a small serving area that they uh, don't need anything done to, or they're going to put a different kind of flooring, but they want to do polished concrete all the way around. So we would do something very similar to this. We would find the area of the large space, take this serving area out, take this utility room out, and now we have our total square footage that we would need to uh, do polished concrete in. Um, so. It's a very applicable uh, situation. Uh, so now I'm going to uh, go back to those multiplication problems, get you to uh, try and expand your horizons there using the area model to uh, model that multiplication.